do this. Um, yeah, we're starting. I'm going to uh, start by saying the correct number of the episode this week, because last week I said uh, I repeated one, so I doubt that threw anybody off because it doesn't really matter. But uh, this is episode 292 of No Laugh Track Podcast. Officially, my name is Justin Severson, the host. I am here with the guy who uh, was here two years ago, and as far as headlining here at Acme. 11 years, he told me last time, in between appearances here, headlining at Acme. Now it's yeah. just been two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome. I was surprised. I, was surprised I mean, this feels, like I, it feels like I came back the next day. Yeah, right. such a, yeah. yeah. And, and because of I that. I think it was worth it. I feel like when I came back here the last time, it, it had exactly the right effect. You Good. Know, it's just like waiting for a drum beat, man. <laughs> right on. You know, yeah. It, you know, it was a, it was perfect. So, um, um, but I'm happy to be back this, uh, uh, um, this soon. I'm, I was thrilled. Yeah. Yeah. I love it here. Okay, so. I'll expect to see you again in 2020. Yeah, yeah. Unless, yeah. or it's, unless it's on some rhythm that we both don't understand. Right. You know what I mean, like at that point, there's a pretty good chance I won't be alive. When they, <laughs> is he? No, he's been dead for a while. <laughs> Oops. Oops. We should we shouldn't have written that down in pen. Maybe pencil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Always pencil, pencil somebody in. So here we are. We're back. I was here last night for the show. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. It was all right. I don't know. Did you? I I hit the road immediately. Like when you leave the stage and the MC comes out, I was like, "All right, thanks everybody." Yeah. I I hit the road immediately. Like I, I don't. Boop. I uh, oh. I do too. Did you come out and say hi to everybody? You I did don't. Not. I don't do that. I haven't done it for a while. You yeah. Haven't. I had a. Um. Uh, it's not a personal thing. It's a. It's a weird thing. I. I used to do it for years, and I used to sell stuff, and um, and then um, and I and I and I. I, I was in Portland and I had a kind of a panic attack one time and I was like, I, I can't, I don't know. There's something I just, so I, I just stopped doing it. Um, I, I don't know what it was, but um, um, I just, I feel like we did this. I, I find that it's a, it's a perfectly decent exchange that we've just had. And I'm not really sure about, it'd be like if, uh, it'd be like if I was single and we had a one night stand and then you got up to leave and then suddenly I was down in the lobby going, hey, but did, was it good? I mean, did you enjoy it? Or do you want a shirt or something? It was bad. Okay. Like, I feel like I should Are you sure you, you don't want a souvenir? I feel like I you should let you resonate with it. I should <laughs> resonate with it. And I don't want to, want to stand there and, and, uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that was it. I mean, when I had stuff to sell, I enjoyed that. And, it, and it's certainly helpful. But, um, um, but it's certainly not a personal thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, and if sometimes somebody says, hey, I'm going to come to the show, you know, can you meet afterwards? You know, sh I'll, I'll try and do that. But yeah, so, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. And people can buy your stuff, you know, online. I, I don't it's even not know hard what, anymore. I, I don't know what people buy anymore either. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to buy a bunch of something and then they're like, I don't know. Oh, is that a CD? I don't have that anymore, right? And then, or an album. I'm not that cool for, I don't have an album crowd. Right, right. they're like, yeah, dude, I love it. Do you have it on vinyl? No, that's never been asked. Um, and um, so, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, but also I don't love the picture thing. You don't? I don't. No, no, because it, it. I feel like I was talking. To, I was talking to the guys last night. You know, before the pictures, people would come, and then they would buy something, or they would just say hi or whatever. But then there's that sort of mid thing of like they expect a picture. They're not going to buy anything. They kind of take up the line, and then also sometimes they don't, they just do it to get it in their collection. Oh yeah. You know how, like when you're out, you take pictures of buildings, and like in that moment, that building looks amazing, and then you're on your phone, and you're like, why did I? What is this? You know what I mean? So I oh, feel that's like ninety out of a hundred pictures I take. Yeah, yeah, like it's right, like. I, like I, you know, so I, 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 I feel like, um, and it somehow downgrades the experience a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. That's just my own thing as an old man, you know. So um, how about the? Because um, I've uh, when the uh, all right, we're gonna take a picture, and then it's ten seconds, twenty seconds, thirty. I, oh, I've got to figure this out. They're like when someone yeah, doesn't know how I to mean, work the. Look, there's guys like Steve O that tour, and he has his own cameraman, and then he takes the picture and puts it up on the site. He does really? it for free, and he moves people through. So the people that buy things, like he has a guy that goes out there with him. And I think if I had that kind of career, or if I had that much, I mean, he literally puts a store together outside. He has a whole other thing, which I, I fully admire. But, but, but um, um, so I think if I if I had that kind of a thing where I had somebody sort of like, um, you know dictating how it would all go i just don't i don't have that's just too much for me to do sure are you this is how i started off uh last week's episode i don't normally do this but are you superstitious at all 
That's so funny. You're the second person to ask me that. About stand-up, no. No. Okay. Just about, uh, How about like daily? Like uh, if I do this, it's going to bring me bad luck. If I don't, I'll be fine. That no, can I can never remember what the rule was I made up for something. <laughs> and I was like, is that three times or two? What did I say? If it, if it goes, you know. Um, I only was really ever superstitious when I like when I like girls in high school. Like, or, you know, like when I first started liking girls. And I'd yeah. be like, okay, if this rock lands in that thing, she's going to call back. Like, you know, I had that weird stuff. But no, um, I, I don't. She loves um, me. She loves me not. You were blowing in the... Yeah, yeah. I Pulling up the pedals. Yeah, exactly. And then not, I did that wrong. Wait, what did I say? Did I say it was loves me not? It's loves me not the one that, like... Yeah, right? Um, yeah. Double negative. No, she does love me. Yeah, I don't have... I, I, uh, life's hard enough without superstitions, you yeah. know, for me. So um, to add that to stand-up... Um, okay. No, if anything, I've probably been too casual about my stand-up in that, like... I'll be, we could do this right up until they go, Greg, and I go, okay. My only thing is I try not to be seated for the, and for the hour. I, like, I try not to sit down before I go on. Oh. Like I try to be, I, I, by the t- you know, for like an hour before I go up, I want to be on my feet the whole time. I okay. like to walk, I like to pace, I like to walk around, but that's only just to, yeah, if I'm seated, I'm way too comfortable and I'm not going to, I'll come out and go, what are we doing? What is this? this is stand up. Okay. <laughs> like I won't have that sort of. You got to be ready. Ready yeah. to go. But I can focus while talking to somebody because I certainly don't try and memorize my – at this point, from about 2 o'clock on, there's no new information. Sure. Unless something happens that's really funny and I can genuinely tell it, I don't try and write or create anything. Okay. You know? Okay. Now, the reason I asked is because um, I've been on a streak last week uh, – well, let me go back here. Like about four or five weeks ago, I, what I like to do a lot of the time is come to the show like I did last night, come Wednesday night and record the show Thursday. Yeah. I was on a streak where I was coming to the show and the recording was not working out for some reason. Like I'd come on Thursday and then we don't have an episode to Guy post. Guy wouldn't show, guest wouldn't show. Some, one well, week somebody didn't show, another, the other week we've had technical difficulties. Yeah. So last night was the first time in about a month and a half where I've gone, you know what? I want to see the show and I'm just going to cross my fingers that this works out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a chance I may have fucked this up by coming to your show last night and you and I are the only ones who are going to hear this. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, that, that's possible too. I, um, um, I you know there are there are guys that have their superstitions and there are guys that have their rituals and there's guys that like to you know like you that's it's a um um it's there's such a balance with it because it's such a bizarre art form anyway and um and a lot of times you know uh, not all clubs are this club so sometimes there's no place for you to stand some clubs oh, yeah. there's no place for you to be you know what I mean like there's no the the club has no rituals so sure you don't get any and so and that's just the way that it is that's our business right um so um you have to adjust so much that to have any kind of superstition would be real tough but I know guys that are like you know there are guys that don't like to come on until right when the features gone off and then they come in and do the thing go back and they go back to their hotel room and all that stuff and yeah i don't know the only other thing i have uh, regarding anything at acme is every thursday i wear the same i have like three pair of these nike uh what is it, crew length yeah. socks yep yeah why i don't know that's funny just started one day uh years ago when i'd come to and they just like oh now there they are yeah i would say in the early days i refused to wear anything unwashed so if i wore it one night i would not wear any of it the next night at all not a, and i would hate it and if i had on a and if i had on like a pair of pants that i had on the day before i'd be bummed about it and i'd think about it and it would ruin <laughs> my set like i really would be like that then i started to think that most of my favorite artists you know like the replacements those guys lived in the same pants for months so i thought yeah. well i mean maybe they're not the paradigm of uh, of, of success and excellence uh, that i should That's be right. shooting Still- for Rocking to this they're, day, Greg. I mean, they're still you my. Know they're, they're still. They're still. They still are actually my human heart beating. But I. I love them so much. But I. But. 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 Uh, um. I did sort of have these weird little things at the beginning. But I think also I didn't know what I was doing. So a lot of it was like uh, maybe I should. You know, I got this other stuff around it, and then yeah. I started to realize like uh, you really should just work on the act. Why don't you work on that part instead yeah. of the? Yeah. You know, I. You know, I went through a lot of iterations of clothing. I tried a lot of different sort of outfits, some sort of personas. I had the mic in, I had the mic out, I had the mic in and out. Sometimes I didn't walk around, I did walk around, I wanted a wireless, like, you know, you go through all this stuff and then at the end you're just like, hey, the jokes. Yeah. How about the jokes, sir? <laughs> How about the content that people are coming for, you know? And, uh, 
uh, uh, but it takes a while to get there, you know? <laughs> Work on the stuff they're paying to see. Well, and also, they don't know, and they don't usually care as much, you know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. love this whole thing that happened with Jack White recently, where they, uh, where we had that conversation with Chris Rock, and he was explaining to him, you know, I do all my stuff in analog, and this is an old Neve board, and all this stuff is on, you know, I've got a lot of this stuff on tape, most of my albums are on tape, and he was talking about his whole thing, because Chris Rock had gone down to do, to record an album at his studio in his studio slash theater slash Penny Arcade down in Nashville. Nashville. And oh, uh, I don't know about this. Yeah, he went. This is in the new uh, Rolling Stone interview, and um, and ah, he went down there. And so Jack I never was showing finished him. It. <laughs> yeah, so Jack was showing him all the stuff, and he goes, uh, "Yeah, nobody cares. Nobody cares how nope. he did it." And he said, "And I had to, I had to fucking sit with that." And then. Because I was the whole reason I was so curious was I, you know, he's come out and he's done this new record and it was done on Pro Tools and he's playing an Eddie Van Halen model guitar, which is couldn't be. It's the antithesis of everything that he stands for, according to what I knew a month ago. But I really appreciate the idea of somebody able to go, oh, yeah, maybe I'm full of shit. Or maybe this thing is unnecessary now. Or maybe that's what got me here, but it doesn't need to take me there. I mean, the thing that I value the most is the least important thing to the listener who doesn't have the time to go, I wonder if that's a real tube amplifier. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nobody cares. Yeah. But we have our ideas about what rituals and what should be, or at least we used to, and now it, it all changes, you know? Um, I just bought tickets for Jack White's uh, tour. Oh, he'll be fantastic. Is he, uh, he's, I, he's unreal. Is he, am I, is he going to walk out with all the guitar? <laughs> no, he's going to come out, but he's going to come out with a, with a, he's not going to come out with a, you know, a 1950s airline plastic guitar and play through airline amplifiers. He's going to come out with an Eddie Van Halen Wolfgang model guitar that he's uh, had three made for himself and play it through something fancy. Have you, you listened know? to his newest album? I have. I've, I've had a tough time with it. Me I've too. I've wrestled with it. Me too. Um, it reminds – it's sort of similar to what Julian has done now with the Strokes where I feel like, okay, do you want me to leave? What are you doing here? Did you not want to finish that song or did you decide just taking a hard left or slowing the voices down on this to make it odd is – like the thing I think – and I think this is common with artists too. You forget – man, if you found a thing that people like, it's all fine to experiment, but man – you know how hard it is to find something anyone likes? Why are you quitting that? Yeah, good point. You know, he comes up with amazing riffs, and a lot of times the song is pretty much just a riff, but he really, I think, it gets super overcomplicated. Sure. Well, uh, and, uh, you know, an artist would say, well, I got to do this to keep myself interested. 100%. Stay interested, but you, but I may go. <laughs> yeah. I see what you're doing and I'm into it. I'm into you having that freedom of expression, but that doesn't mean as a fan, I have to go there, you know, and that I, I think that's something as an artist you come to and go, okay, I mean, with stand up, you, you stand up, you get a little bit less room for experimentation because we're really looking for the one result. But, yeah. it, um, um, but I have played around with my cadences and I have played around with the way I tell stories and I'm, I've moved through subject matter and, um, um, we yelled at my past and not like, you know, rejected yeah. certain stuff. And then, and then a couple months ago, I was walking in to see, well, it was longer than a couple months ago. It was a little over a year ago. I went to see Temple of the Dog before Chris Cornell passed away, obviously. And, mm -hmm. um, I know, uh, one of the guys in the band and he, and, and um, um, uh, he, so I was walking to the forum club, uh, and at the forum in Los Angeles, and uh, this guy said to his friend, "Is that Greg Barron?" And the other guy goes, "Fuck, dude, it's so '90s tonight," and I, my heart it swelled with fucking pride. I was like, "Right." I'm from that time. That's how people remember me. I sort of have a thing I do. I don't need to fucking work. I like, just fucking be. Just be. Be that thing. Like, it's cool that I'm even considered that. So, um, good for you. I, it was, you know, like you go, yeah, just what do you. I, I, it's hard because you, we are, um, we are, um, there's so many new platforms and so many new ways to be funny or where you're supposed to be funny or are you all funny on this and you know i mean twitter sort of failed me or i failed it yeah um, you know in terms of uh it just wasn't a medium that i found uh, any um foothold in you know when you were here a little over two years ago one of the i listened back to it just recently one of the things that you talked about was uh, <laughs> think about how much has changed between now and then greg but yeah. one of the things you said on that podcast was uh that uh Chris Christie had just endorsed Donald Trump, and you were like, "I'm I'm off the internet. I'm taking a break." That's so funny. I 
I did too. I uh-huh. did. I remember because I remember, you know, like, wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. I remember, holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, isn't that something? Yeah, isn't that something? Uh-huh. That was that was, uh, y- yeah. Think, just think about how innocent we were back then. I mean, just given what happened this morning with him going on Fox and Friends, which like there's certain things you just can't miss if you own a phone or somebody. I mean, mm-hmm. if you walked into any you know uh, restaurant today, you saw it up on the thing. Yeah. But you know, um, I I've gotten better. I, I walked away for a while, for a long time, and I've never regained my, I've never picked up the habits that I had before. I really did put a big. You did? Okay. Yeah, because I found that, like, um, I have a couple podcasts that I liked, and they keep me sane uh, politically, and then okay. I don't need more information than that. And um, uh, I'm, I am I have two girls, 16 and 13, so I hear stuff through them. But mostly we're, we're concerned with their schoolwork, and my oldest is in AP history, so he spent a lot of time going through history, which I really enjoyed. That's made me calm. Um, um, so I keep my head in it because my daughters have questions, but I don't get baited by it. Yeah. Um, and also, here we are two years down the line, and we're all still here. Yeah. Uh-huh. And people are coming to comedy shows. Yeah. And, I mean, look, uh, and maybe it's the... You know, I, I I annoy people when I say this, but I'm like, look, everything that happened was what was supposed to happen, and this is and the res- and all of the things that will come out of this will be things that needed our pipes needed cleaning, <laughs> the system needed to be shook up, uh-huh. and needed to be reexamined. You know, and this and he is man, he has made us look at every single branch of government. <laughs> every time he picks somebody to, for a new job, people go, first off, I didn't even know that was a job. Secondly, I don't know what that job is, uh, yeah. but I'm certainly excited about this guy he wants to hire who. It turns out as a murderer or whatever. I've never paid attention more. So yeah, there's something to be said for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, there's a reason for everything. And in some ways, then you can kind of look at it and go, well, I just have to be grateful that for this a certain bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A- a- absolutely. I uh, really enjoyed listening to some episodes of the one of the podcasts. Well, I'm just going to focus on one of them right yeah. now. The podcast, Maybe It's You. Wow, thank you, man. That is, um, that's cool. So I can really I say appreciate this? that. I, I, I want to talk about it for a while here, but yeah. I, I just want to say um, it made me think, okay, it's a podcast that you do with your wife yes. about relationships, and I'm married, second marriage, Okay. Uh, and I, my, the thing that goes through my head is, should I be listening to this with my wife? Would that be good for us? Or would it be better just for me to take it and have that just for me? Um. I, it all depends on what you get from it, and I suppose what the what it is. I mean, anytime, it all depends on I guess what you want out of the experience. You yeah. know, if you think it would be good for you too, if you think it would help broach the uh, issues. Here's what's so here's what's so interesting about it. How long have you been doing that one? Uh, I think it's been out six weeks or something. Yeah, yeah. I think it I listened been, to four yeah. of them so far. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I just, literally legitimately. Enjoy them. I will listen to any everyone that comes on this podcast that has their own. I will give it a sample and listen to it. Oh wow! I don't always like them. Just like I'm, you know, people don't always like what I'm doing. Yeah. I legitimately like that one. Yeah, and they, yeah, and, and and some of them take a like podcasts are interesting because um, um, since you've started, I'm sure you realize like oh the field has changed. You know, when I when I when it first came around, I my, me and a buddy did one called Walking the Room, right. and, and we dicked around. And people were open to that. There yeah. was time and there was, you know. Um, but now people are like, you know, they kind of want to know what you're all about pretty quickly because there's 400,000 of them lining up and there's lots of good ones. And, and, um, uh, and but sometimes, but the learning curve is different because the field is more crowded. So people don't give you as much time. For sure. Um, and Amir and I obviously have written books for years and we had this book was supposed to come out i mean we've been working on it for maybe six years uh, this book that we have coming out um that we turn in the final draft of it tomorrow we just did all the edits oh wow um, called um uh it's uh how to keep your marriage from sucking and that comes out in june and then in january um was the second part so the two parts and the second part is called we used to be in love and now we work here um and so it the first one covers how to set it up so that it doesn't 
uh, befuddle you or fail you later on or how you can get through some stuff that was really a, by, by, by starting rituals early on. Um, and the second one is about, okay, now you're, you're in the shit. So you, we can't, re- we can't, it's going to be hard to reverse engineer your wet, your marriage. Yeah. But there are some things, you know, taking ownership of as much of the stuff that's yours as possible and working through that. So, um, but we were having a very hard time writing the book. And we are completely different human beings. I don't shut up, as you know. <laughs> and um, and she does not like to talk. And I said, well, you know, we should do a podcast. She goes, let's just put the book out and then we'll do a podcast. I go, that's really actually the wrong way to do that. I think people are more open to podcasts than they are to reading at, these, at this point. And maybe we'll set the tone a little bit for people who don't know us, which is a lot of folks since a lot of times passed since our last book, and do this thing. So she begrudgingly did it. I only did it so we could talk. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw. I've I've read that. That's, yeah, so you think that's so. sort of uh, selfish, but good for you. <laughs> well, I really wanted to have, you know, um, obviously you've been married twice, so like you're in, and my wife's been married twice. Um, you, it, it's hard to m- monitor your own behavior, and you put, like, what I'd say to you is do a podcast with your wife, like, you put that third party that invisible third party there Mm -hmm. and you put on your sort of professional hats and and we started to try and listen yeah and she said something funny on the first one and i started laughing and i said i didn't and these questions i had i didn't use and we sort of got through it and i was like man we haven't talked like this in a long time and um and we both thought well, it was worth doing again and then a friend of ours actually heard them because i was only putting them i wasn't even putting them out because i wasn't sure and i put them up on like uh, what's the uh, uh, the one where people used to put their rap mixes on SoundCloud? Oh yeah, SoundCloud. yeah, yeah. And our friend Moon heard them, and she said, "This is you got to She she had a podcast, a, a great podcast um, called Launch Left that she does with Rain Phoenix uh, about music, and she took us over to this network, uh, Starburns, and they got behind it and ran into it. Yeah. And so we got a real producer. We actually got a third person in the room and we go to a studio to do it. Oh, okay. Oh, you, yeah, you're not sitting in your living room. No. My other podcast about rock documentaries, I produce myself. I do it at my house and, and uh, do it with my, my friend Kay from Letters to Cleo and yeah. it's real fun. But it's super specific. But the, yeah. So yeah, that that is... Um, yeah. Does it bring up feelings for you? Yeah. And it makes me think about... How do I say this? Uh, Isn't that the question? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you know, like the the things that didn't, the, the mistakes I made in the, fr- it, it, it has brought those back into my mind. Like, oh yeah, I need to be careful and not make the mistakes I did. Yes. During my first marriage. Look, I mean, the the great news here's here's not that it was all my fault. No, 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 no. no. And I go, that's. But here's the thing. But you can only take care of what you did. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about other people. And that's the whole maybe it's you. It's like, oh, maybe it's maybe it's mm-hmm. you means really maybe it was. Oh, shit. That's me going, fuck, maybe, dude, it was you. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. And it's interesting once you've had that realization, if you can let go of some of your own resentment uh, and also let go of some of the like, hey, man, that happened in 2011. I got to let myself go. I, you don't have, if you're not gonna gonna uh, let go of it. I can't do anything about it, Greg. But- <laughs> How did you just say 2011? I don't know. That's the year out. that uh, that was the shit year. That was your shit year. Yes, that's it's amazing. amazing that you just said 2011. That's, ph- that's phenomenal. Well, that's crazy. Something in that, Ben. I, wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, so because it's 2018, and um, I'm done now with that. Yeah. Because um, I I know I've done bad things, but I've also done good things. I'm complex. And I know when I did bad things, I they were the best choices I could make given the situation. They were, resp- you know, most of the time it's your fearful response to something. Uh, it's not a love-based response to do something stupid. No. Um, it's brave to do something when when uh, when uh, when it from, comes from love, but it's stupid to do something usually when it comes from fear. And so... Um, um, so if you're going to still hang on to that, I'm not going to. And uh, because I have to, you need me to actually be better than that. Yeah. You want me to be better than the person you are thinking I am. 
that's your own self-fulfilling thing. You have to let go of that for yourself. So it's hard. It gets complicated. But um, I like listening to uh, someone. Well, in this case, you, you and your wife talking. But you know, you hear the problems that you guys have had or gone through, and like, oh yeah, hey. I'm not the only one. These are th- these are things that everybody, lo- not everybody, but a lot of relationships are dealing with. Because uh, I don't really have, and I'm, one of those things uh, that in the, one of the episodes I listened to, you guys were talking about the people in your lives, uh, like this friendship, uh, this person that's a friend holds this role, like to to hear certain things that you need to say, right? Right, right. and. Um, I don't know, like right now in my life, I don't know if I have someone that I'm bouncing uh, the, the relationship stuff off of right now. Very interesting time for men. And this is like a whole thing. There's a whole thing about like women actually tend to have a better crew of people. Uh, oh, I guarantee my wife does. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm only lucky that I'm an alcoholic, so I can find that group a lot of places and I have those people that are in my life and and so they're but they're that's it's a thing that I really had to reinvest in a couple of years ago. Um so there's a little bit of that but um because one of the things that I learned in in um uh in recovery is especially my job as a man and I did my own my own ideas and not how all men should work but I feel like it's my job as the guy that is the head of the, the, the father in the family to leave the problems, to, to to take the problems to somebody else and come home with the solutions. Okay, yeah. Right? I want to be the guy with solutions. I, I don't get to be the baby anymore. I, I've been, you know, you're in show business. You're, if you get in show business, you're saying, I'm a baby. <laughs> I'm a baby. And everybody goes, yep, here come the babies. <laughs> we pick them up at the airport. We wake them up to go to their fucking radio show. We bring them out here. We let them talk for a little bit. We give them a couple of drinks. We send them home. We're all babies. <laughs> Big fucking babies. And and we've, and we've chosen that life. And so we want everyone to treat us like that because that's we're special here. Why am I not special there? Yeah. Um, that's not a great way to be a dad. It's not a great way to be a husband. Um, and at the end of the day, it fails you. So I've tried to figure out how to, you know, be different. Um, that doesn't mean my wife's going to be different, but that doesn't matter because at least I'm I'm taking the right approach to my own life. Yeah, yeah. You, um, but other things that I, another thing I've thought uh, that I should ask you is that. We talked about this a lot the last time we were here. The, of course, the most famous probably book that you did. The he's yep. just not that into you, yes. and uh, the movie you came on based on that. Yep. I'm curious. Daughters. I also have two daughters. Yeah, they're a little bit younger than yours. In fact, one just turned ten yesterday. Oh, happy birthday! So birth they're 10. right now they're the ten and eleven, yeah. soon to be ten and twelve. Uh, in, in in your life, do you your daughters? Do you give them a copy of your book, relationship books? Do you do you think that no, would be good for started, them now in ten years? You know, it's don't fu- think about it. Um, with them, um, they know of them because they're just part of the lore of the family. Sure, but we've never even taken one down. I don't think I. It, it's funny with your with your kids and your work um, when it's public work. You and when it's stuff you're known for, you kind of want to let them come to it. Okay. You know, you kind of want to let them discover it on their own, pull the book down themselves and see what all the fuss is about. Yeah. You know, do we try and, it, it, you know, um, instill those values in them? Sure. Do are we able to kind of, but they're kids. Um, you know, there's a lot of we'll reframe things for them. Like my daughter said, you know, I don't not take drugs because you don't want me to. I don't take them. I go, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's stop that right now. I never said that. I never said I didn't want you to take drugs. I don't make me that guy because that's not the truth. I, I mean, I, you know, what I, I here, let's look at it this way. What I want is for you to make really informed, smart decisions for yourself that you can live with. Yeah. And if you can live with it, then I'm going to have to. Right. But. Don't put me on the don't side. There's a, I'm, you have all the permission in the world. I showed you how to sneak out of the house. I told you you should get your driver's license. I'm on your side and as far as that goes. Uh-huh. You know. Um, um, so I've tried to take away the excuses. Okay. And talk to her like you know. Um, but also, you got to get your heart broke. You got to make mistakes. You got to fall down a flight of stairs. Like you just have to have those those experiences. Mm-hmm. I talk about that in my stand. Yeah, you just, about, I just yeah. We hit me just as you're so saying much, that. So much, so much. So many, we've taken away so much of the uh, 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 the myth. We've taken away a lot of mystery. We've taken away a lot of, um, but we also have taken away a lot of uh, risk. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that that's 
a good thing or not because I don't know if something catastrophic happens. Everybody knows what to do because um, uh, my kids have certainly not been challenged in that way, um, uh, and me less so, but I have been stuck out in the wilderness with a broken car and no phone and having to change a tire and needing to walk miles and trying to figure, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I have those versions of it without cell phone coverage in the old days and all that stuff. Um, uh, so I, I don't know, you know, but you got to get your heart broken. I don't know how to, I mean, that's part of life. It's kind of, I kind of miss it. I was listening to the fucking The Weekends record when he made, you know, this new thing that is sort of directed completely at Selena Gomez. And, you know, he's a young man still, The mm-hmm. Weekend. But it's just that overwrought kind of, you really, he really got hurt and wrote a record. <laughs> like, and I just, I remember those breakups that would propel you into some other new thing oh, when yeah. you were young. I mean, I, uh-huh. my choices were to join the bowling team at college and then have those guys hate me. But, <laughs> Why do you have a mohawk? You're, you can barely bowl. I'm just like, I'm trying to make new friends. And you guys drink. Yeah, right? I'm trying to reinvent myself in this kind of odd way. I want the girl that they join the bowling team, you know. Um, uh, but, you know, the, the, um, that's sort of the rich stuff in life. You know, pain is a really, pain is something to learn how to, ha- it's, I think you need to learn how to have it and learn how to manage it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so, and of course, you don't wish pain on anybody, but it's a, I think it's so. It's been so crucial for me, you know. Oh yeah. Well, I don't. This popped into my uh, head last night. Listened to your set about uh, guys being tactile, right? Yes. And then you know, just like uh, you need to learn about uh, you know what what will burn you and what will what will hurt if it lands on your foot or right. whatever. I, this popped into my head in college. I took a photography class. I was left in the room uh, like uh, after uh, the class wasn't going on. I was there to finish up a project. The little there's a little iron that you would use to at the end of the to take the picture and put it like mat it right. Mm-hmm. I had it plugged in to test to see if it was hot right in the palm of my hand yep. yeah yep. genius oh my god genius oh my god had a, i had an arrowhead shaped blister from that iron for the next week right yeah i mean, idiots. I, think, I mean you, idiots there's a really interesting thing if you look at the way society is broken down men put men in charge of their pain and then we go f- find ways to have pain together right <laughs> and we've so we, we do it around sports and we mm, do it around sure. other things that are physical where we have allowed ourselves to slug each other in the face like it's so important we've gone out seeking it no one thinks it's fetishy nobody thinks it's weird nobody thinks it's wrong right um uh, and then we do things as kids like have bb gun wars and we throw rocks at each other and we really try to test the limits of our you know the elasticity of our skin and what will and what we can do physically oh my god the wrestling matches when we're early 20s late teens Jesus, with the guys stuff, i was like guys get off of me i'm not you know because i was so holy like, crap yeah, it was, but I, and it's, it's a, um, um, you know, you see fucking, you see animals do it when they fucking buck mm-hmm. smack into each other. They, um, uh, they want to know, they want to have an understanding of what, you know, just on a base level, like I'm going to do this. We've, we've sort of agreed. Let's go at it. Yeah. You know, this isn't real, you know, but I need this experience. Um, but we've. We don't have it with women. We don't, and we don't have it across genders. Right. right. And women don't seem to have it as much um and that's a weird thing so pain is an area that men seek um uh actively from very young age yeah. you know uh and then there are the girls that follow and there are that do and and they do it in their own ways and there are um those you know those risky things like uh, all the export like you know when you watch these kids do all that skateboard shit and you think jesus christ man <laughs> i would i I would have tried that once, fell down that flight of stairs, been fucking so ravaged by one fall, I'd never do it again. Right. And I'd tell that story forever. That's just a Tuesday for you, and you're going to keep going. Mm-hmm. You know, so it makes good video for YouTube, man. Yes. <laughs> and I don't think, but I also think, as I said last night, I don't think we've explored this interesting, like, I don't, I don't think we've explored the tactile experience that people have where they just want to know, um, just what a tactile experience is and been able to to separate them from bad behavior or somebody's trying to get at something they don't understand they're trying to get at. Boys sort of get to explore it when things start blowing up on film and in television and all that stuff. But this whole other, uh, it's called AMSR, ASMR videos. They're audio sensory. I, I, I don't... I, I, I don't know what the acronym is. Okay. But they're literally just videos of women, uh, mostly, but men whispering and talking softly and rubbing feathers on the mic and making <laughs> popping sounds with their mouths. And there's thousands of people watch them. Some of them are just odd. Some of them are erotic. Some of them. But it's not just, it's it's its own thing. It's not like then somebody gets naked. They're just there and they wet their lips and they 
sometimes they're rude, sometimes they're boring. Sometimes you, it's a, a woman just looking like it's like you're going uh, to l- fill out an application for something, and they're just scratching a pencil. It's just fucking bizarre, but it's Completely. also like, <laughs> but I'm like. How is this? But it's an experience that yeah. somebody wants and somebody knows how to give. Yeah. And I think when you start to learn that stuff about ourselves, it's important to explore it, to normalize it and also go, OK, we may have been attributing some of this behavior that we don't understand to something that was really just meant to be a tactile experience. Somebody didn't know how to get at cuddle parties. Remember when people were talking about cuddle right. parties a yep. few years ago? Yeah. It goes right along with that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's all that stuff. And I think now that we're in this thing where like it, we're so in acceptance, like, you know, we really are like the, the, the door has it, it hasn't flooded out the rest, rest of the world. But it has begun this like, man, whatever it is, just don't hurt anybody and stick within the age parameters that we've set up. But other than that, if you want to marry a fence post, that's all you do. <laughs> or just put your teeth on it because that's a feeling you like. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't think I like that. I know. Right. That, well, there you go. There you go. What are the? Um, I saw a couple of these. You, you did a you did a review on was it Instagram of a some candy bar some candy. What are you doing? That's when I let my. That's when I let it out. Yeah, I'm not what afraid. To, I'm not. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to uh, to speak up to big candy. I'm not afraid to. It's never somebody uh, needs to. So I'm glad you are. I I have you know I tr- I um. I've spent a lot of time, as most of a comics do, driving. And when you go up the, I, I go to San Francisco quite a bit. And when you drive up the five, all the truck stops, that's where they test market candy. So you know, uh, uh, for instance, the, this whole thing started when I I saw White Twix, which to me, like, there's just, that's just wrong. It just it feels like something you dreamt and or a nightmare you had, and it and I. I was like, well, I got to buy this and then I need to talk about it because I opened it and I went, this looks like a fucking potato bug. Like it looks wrong. It doesn't, I don't know what this flavor is. It's, uh, you know, it's, it feels, I, I think I said in the video that it tastes, uh, uh, it tastes like eating a nurse's station. Like it's just, it's, there's something wrong with all of it. Um, and, uh, and also just fucking be good at Twix. Just can you not? Why yeah. do you have to? Why do you have to thin the herd out? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and then Reese's did the thing where, you know, like it's a the Reese's. I, I think we forget to regard and have pride for the thing and we start fucking with it. And now they have the thing where they put the Reese's pieces inside the thing. And I was like, no, yeah. no, fuck, go make a new candy. You know, what? what's the last, who's made, it, what was the last significant candy bar that came out that really like, shook things up? I mean, it's been a long time. I love Kit Kat, just the straight, regular Kit Kat. The Kit Kat is perfect. They, I don't know if they still make it. A few it, years ago, they made this giant stick. Uh, look like a candy bar sized Kit Kat, where it's just one stick. Right, right. It's gross. It changes like, the whole thing. It's that thing where you go, you don't understand that your numbers and proportions are right. So it's yeah. like, you know, it's like when somebody makes a sweater and then they make it in four other colors and go right, but the burgundy one was the one that was right, and yeah. the other ones are just uh-huh. extra. And I get it, but there is something about sort of knowing what you are. And I'm sure as a business model, they go, "Well, fuck you, Greg. We want to at least every one of these will be tried once by a lot of people, yeah. and then they'll still stick with the peanut butter cup." But I feel like you're just putting shit inside of shit, and it feels lazy, and it feels hostile, and it makes you think, well, "I'm fucking stupid." Oh, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead. If you make your thing bigger, but then twist it, or take one of the ingredients out and put a different one in, right. now you've made. But the other company does that better. You don't put the peanut. Somebody made the. Oh, I'm I'm already. Can you see? I'm like, <laughs> I'm off. What was the? You did one for. Uh, I think the most recent one was Hershey's Gold. Oh, and you describe you oh. describe the color as beigeum. Beigeum. Yeah, it's like a beige and yellow. Like it's just as ugly. It's, and they and there's. And I don't, oh, be good at chocolate. Just be good at that. You know what I mean? Like it, it's uh, uh, Hershey, and they, they you call it used a creme, which I thought was a creme, creme, right? Yep. Creme. Yeah, and um. Um, My kids and I love joking about the word nougat. Nougat's a strange word, and I don't Isn't know. Isn't it? A, a nougat is a what? Is it a whipped? Yeah. I, right. I don't That's something we don't question enough stuff. I think sometimes you go, what are, like, uh, what is the nougat, by the way? Although the nougat stuff, you don't hear, um, uh, chocolate was a significant, you know, candy bars in particular were a significant when I was a kid. The, the gummy stuff didn't come along until yeah. I was in college, you know, like that. I mean, even afterwards, you know, the, the gummy revolution has been the most significant thing. And then they made them all sour. And yeah, but um, but even they're spinning their wheels a little bit, you know, uh, and, I, and there's only so many flavors under the sun, too. You realize that, you know, salted caramel was probably the biggest innovation in recently. In, yeah. Yeah. Of like adding that savory in there just mm-hmm. right. You yeah. know, Um 
The but. Cadbury eggs, the little, the little tiny ones, yes. the are little my favorite. The, the, the little ones that have the stuff in them are the ones that are just it's pure just chocolate. chocolate, just milk chocolate. Yeah, inside. Those, those are great. Those so are great. Good. Yeah, the, and then you go to Target the day, the day after Easter, they're like eighty cents for the giant bag. Yes, awesome. Yeah, yeah. There's 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 um uh, there's certainly a lot of good things, but I feel like if to review a candy bar and tell somebody it's good is like to tell them you know the sun is great. <laughs> Fuck, I know that. It's, <laughs> It's, it, it, but if there's a big black spot on the sun, then I got to have a problem with it. Sure. Um, so I, uh, um, so I feel like I just pick things that I go. Why would you like this whole like the? There's a whole bunch of M and M's that are ras, raspberry. I fuck you. Just ugh. is someone doing Oreo because they're coming out with Oreo flavor new one every month. It seems. Yeah, Oreo, but here's what's interesting. So the Oreo people made a candy bar, but they attributed their chocolate to another company. So they didn't try and get in the chocolate game. They stayed in the Oreo game, but they invited a chocolate company along to make the chocolate. Hmm. Where they go wrong is when they uh, when they try and make their own, like when they put a cookie inside of a thing that you go, that's not an Oreo, but you think it's an Oreo, but it's not, and it doesn't taste like one, and fuck you. <laughs> I mean, I, maybe you don't have to say that, but that's... <laughs> That's the stuff I allow myself this area to be upset about because it's silly. It's yeah, like shouting. Exactly. It, it's like shouting at a lamp. But yeah. um, uh, uh, but I do have uh, um, sort of an old man's purview on this stuff. And also, um, I, I think it's, there's something interesting in not trying to be everything to everybody. Yeah. You know, um, uh, it feels... Um, and it, yeah, like I said, and also it's got to be shitty to work there to go. So the colors are the same, and it's yeah, just put the more figure out another way to put Reese's inside of Reese's. And right. if you've made something new in the last year, put it inside the other thing. Put the white chocolate thing inside the dark chocolate thing. Well, that doesn't make sense for white chocolate. I don't give a fuck. Let's just re- do yeah. it. Yeah, it's just I, like uh, it's no different than Taco Bell putting like the chicken outside the, you know, where the the shell is a piece of chicken. It's it's no different than that. There, but I have to say now this is interesting. Now this is interesting because you brought up a really good point. Right. They've taken the same five things that they essentially own and just rewrap them, unwrap them, redouble wrap them, mm-hmm. undouble wrap oh, them. Oh, yeah. Made uh, up names. Fry it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, over and over again. Um, and for me, it's the consistency of of who's doing the buying. Like, there was a period where the chicken was better than it is now. And there was a period where some of the sauces were better than they are now. That's it. You're having the same thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I would say that... Um, uh, what, what the missteps are is when uh, Twix or when uh, Reese's goes and makes their version of a Twix bar, it's not a Twix bar. That can't, that thing in the middle is not as good as a Twix. You're trying to be a Twix. Why don't you let Twix be Twix? Right. You know, um, so that I find that upsetting. Um, um, <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. I want to talk a bit about your, uh, you mentioned it briefly, about your other uh now, am I not missing? Are there just two podcasts that you're doing right now? It's the... Yeah. Okay. And yeah. Rock Out With Your Doc Out. Rock Out With Your Doc Out. Yeah. Which was the only... You know, it was very hard to find a rock documentary... To- like, it was very hard to find a title. A title? <laughs> really. One that was sort of catchy. And I mean, I, neither Kay and I are crazy about it. Like, oh, that's awesome. It was like a bad joke, but it sort of stuck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it works. Um, yeah. But I think we could have just called it Take Your Dick Out. And that would have been more subtle and Rick Out With Your Dick Out. Yeah. Rick Out. So, Rock Out With Your Doc Out. And... Um, um, uh, I, I, the funny thing about the, the, uh, I'd done a podcast and I hadn't been able to find one to do after it. It's a very, um, I don't want to do one by myself. Didn't want to do one by myself. Okay. Um, didn't know what really what I wanted to talk about. Um, didn't know exactly how I wanted to do it. Um, but at a certain point I went, yeah, I just got to get back in there. I, I can't just be standing on the sidelines. Um, and I was like, you know, I love rock documentaries. And my friend Kay was in a band, and she doesn't even actually, she doesn't care about them at all, really. And I love her, and she's incredibly interesting. She had this amazing life, and uh, you know, as the lead singer of Letters to Cleo. And now she writes the music for the, um, uh, it was the Care Bears thing, and the um, that other one, uh, Doc McStuffins. Uh, she also wrote uh, and sang all the songs on Josie and the Pussycats. So she's this really interesting person, and um, um, and so. I said, you want to come over and talk about, we'll watch a rock documentary once a week and talk about it? And she said, sounds great. And that's it. And I love them because that's the thing I probably wished I'd done that I right. haven't. That, that I, so I get to live vicariously through her and through these documentaries. And then I get to sort of have her to counterpoint and say, well, is that right? Is that, you know, is this the way it is? Is it not the way it is? Um, and also, um, I, you know, I am obsessed with behavior. 
people's behavior. Yeah. How bands interact, how musicians interact, but they're, you know, all of that stuff, because there really is just, you know, that's all there is, is how we treat each other. So I love watching people, their mechanism, what pushes them, you know, the narcissism or the self-loathing or whatever it is. Because, you know, usually a documentary, if it's a good documentary, somebody fucked up. Is there a <laughs> replacements documentary? N- no. Now, this is an interesting thing. So, um they actually, no, there's one called uh, Colored Me Obsessed, which is just people talking about the replacements, and they didn't even get the rights to the music. So a couple of years ago, Bob Mayer wrote this book about the replacements. It's the, one of the best books I've ever read, period. It's like, the, it's like a John Updike version of, of rock bio. It is the, I mean, I wept a couple times. It, <laughs> wow. is, it starts with them. I mean, it's in the book, but, you know, you know what their lives were like and how much abuse Bob took at the hands of his parents and getting almost going insane and trying to kill himself and her like just oh it's heavy duty um, uh, and it's written really well and then charmingly and even even with all their faults you still kind of love them although they, they, you have no problem going even they're telling you we're, we're assholes yeah you know at every opportunity they shoot themselves in the foot so I actually call the friend who produces documentaries Jeff Garland um, who did um, the one about the photographer, uh, Vivian Mayer, which was on Netflix, which is about the finding this photographer who had never been published because she just took photos. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jeff Garland from, you know, Kirby Enthusiasm. Yeah. I said, there's this amazing book. I'm going to meet the author. I'm, I'm going to introduce myself to him on Twitter. But if it, if it's available, I'd like to, I, I want to make this, because this is the narrative you want. Okay. He, you know, I got a hold of him and he was like, well, it's already happening. Oh, but I have yet to really see that anywhere. I just hope it is. I, it, 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 Bob did such a great job telling their story, and it is a story that needs to be told. They're the greatest American rock band of my lifetime. Interesting. And yeah. They, so is there another one? How about Is there another one that you've uh, tried to follow up on and do your own uh, besides the replacements? No, no, because I didn't. I didn't have a. I mean, with that one, there was a source material. I met. I sort of made friends with Bob Garland. Was a big replacements fan as well. Okay. Uh, Odenkirk may be involved in something that they're doing because I know he was also excited about it. Um, but in my mind, I just wanted even to say to to this guy, or let me help you meet people. Let yeah. me make this happen yeah, because yeah, yeah. I felt like. I feel like they need to be canonized and they need to be regarded and it needs to be put in stone everywhere. I don't care if they don't fucking care. It's not their my, it's not their business right. what I want to happen for them because they made the music. But in my mind I'm like so many things get washed away or changed by time and they were you know, they were just so emblematic of that time period too because as I tell a lot of other comics if you grew up around that time some around the same age as those guys um if you were an artist at all, and be, you, um, when I came up with the guys from Mr. Show and Pat and all like that, you hated everything. You had looked at everything with contempt, including yourself. You would, wouldn't even trust your own fucking motives. If you fucking did a callback, you would go, you're a fucking asshole. Like, <laughs> it was ridiculous, really. But the replacements were sort of that thing of, like, they were too good to be successful. They were like, we can't be fucking successful. Why would we do that? To our, because, but also, but they really wanted to be successful, as we all do. Right. You know, the, the, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, Patton was like that, but he was also shaking people's hands and actually doing show business the way you're supposed to. <laughs> uh, and thus, he has an incredible career. But, yeah, yeah. um, um, <laughs> Uh, and that sort of winged. And now I have to say, young people love everything. Millennials or or whatever, whatever, whoever the, these kids are, they, you know, they go to movies that we hated. I mean, Kay did a a record release party for the vinyl um, of. Uh, uh, Josie and the Pussycats and so the studio band got together to play some songs and then they are going to bring the cast out for a little Q&A and they had to move it into a 2,000 seat theater where people showed up with cat ears crying no one the filmmakers l- l- lost their careers because of that movie it was so fucking hated they never made a movie again <laughs> what? yes God. yes Tara Reid and Rachel Lee Cook barely worked Rosario Dawson was too special not to that's right and Rachel Lee Cook a Minnesota native yeah well yeah who's fucking great yeah and was, and was the your brain on drugs she was that girl in that ad she when is a kid. in the yeah when she yes that was her first thing when she was a kid this is your brain this is your brain on drugs she's the frying pan girl any questions? Before she was, uh, yeah, and then she remade it a couple years ago as a political thing. It was fantastic. Oh, she's, wow. She's, yeah, she's wildly cool. But 
but these kids had embraced this movie that we all, here's how bad we thought all thought it was. I didn't go to see it in the theaters and I had friends that wrote the music on it. The people that wrote the music <laughs> on it didn't talk about it or admit that they'd done it. Yeah, yeah. When when we were we finally got the DVD, someone gave it to us and we were watching it and my my water broke my for, for our first daughter and I went that's how bad that movie is. She was like, fuck, I want out. Oh, let's go now. I'm, I want out. Let's go to the hospital. Let's do this because I can't watch it. Um, so to go to, to this place and see all these kids embrace this thing and Kay, uh, they just did the, well, they did four songs from the thing. The kids have been watching this and watching it, passing it around and Kay started crying during the set. She's like, I've, not, I've been a letters to Cleo for years. We played thousands and thousands of shows. I've never had this kind of reaction to anything I've ever done. It was stunning. You know? Yeah. Um, and I was so you get nothing from not liking something. You get nothing yeah. from hating something except yeah. your own agitation. Uh huh. That's a so, very good point. To to see that kind of love for something and for me to go, well, why do you care if they like it anyway? What do you? They don't nobody, you know. But why why not like it? Why not like things? Or not? You don't have to have an opinion. Yeah. You don't actually have to know or say anything. I want to uh, mention before we wrap this up. One of the things I want to get to is the. Um, when I was looking through the, your episodes, I was on, uh, you know, like the Apple podcast yeah. thing. I was looking through your episodes of Rock Out With Your Doc Out. And the one of them that definitely caught my eye that I started listening to. And this is f- ironic, I guess, because you were like, yeah, I don't really didn't really have strong feelings about this. It's the one about and this is shows our little bit of an age difference. The Rock of Fire Explosion, the documentary about the showbiz pizza. I was a kid. I was born in the 70s, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old in the 80s. I had birthday parties that was everything to me. It, it, everything, Greg. That's so fascinating and great to hear that because it, it, and, and also Kay and I have had since that. Since the recording of that, we have... You've had a bunch of people like me go, we love that place! We've reassessed our... We have decided to reassess it and and do it. So it, it is a it, it is a documentary um, about it about what appears to be the, the fetish at the beginning of people who love the band, the mechanical band from um, Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. Originally... Uh, showbiz. Sh- showbiz pizza. pizza. Chuck E. Cheese, yep. Yeah. And the guy, and then it's also about the guy that made them, and yeah. the people that, and people that, people that will buy the whole thing. They're called shows. People will buy a show and install it in their home, and then about how that guy didn't patent it, and then he got screwed, and he also made a whack a mole, and then his thing goes Grey Gardens, and uh, and it just was. I was just old enough to not do any of that. Yeah. I was older than you, so mm-hmm. I didn't. And then when I had my kids, it wasn't quite a thing. And so I sort of missed it. Kay, on the other hand, a little bit younger than me, didn't. And um, so, and it was also very wide. It was, the documentary was so wide and co- sort of kept evolving that I was sort of thrown by it. Okay. Yeah, I but, haven't seen it. But after talking to people and the fact that it really stuck with us, it's become maybe my my favorite one of last year was the one about the national because it's such a beautiful story yeah. about the two brothers it just really fucking tore me up and and i also was sort of a, my wife liked the national i was a little ambivalent because they seemed a little and i was wrong and i now i love them okay um but the 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 um there was so much to try and understand about the rock of fire thing that i need to step back and go and i don't mean this in a, in a diminishing way at all but it was like that thing of like bronies like mm-hmm. our last guest on our podcast was uh, Tara Strong, who's one of the voices. Uh, she's Sparkle Pony, I guess, on in the, on the cartoon. Oh, okay. And we talked about the bronies. Yeah. And, and I've also stepped back and went, okay, hey man, do your thing. But I, you know, it's so easy to make fun of something like that. It's fucking actually ridiculous. And again, you get nothing. But to really understand it, it's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. So we want to show it again and have a reevaluation. Okay. And do it live because I think I want to hear from people. Interesting. You know how they. What what their experience was because I'm really open to the idea of like somebody explaining something back to me. Yeah. Um, oh, I I was a good enough student that when I uh, I brought my uh, report card to the Showbiz Pizza to get my free tokens. Not only uh, like on you uh, on your podcast, you were saying you know oh uh, you know people would parents would bribe their kids. You get good grades, we'll celebrate and take you to this place. Yeah. Well, they also at one point switched at least in my local one where if you got A's and B's, you would get like two tokens for an A and one for a B. So you could bring the whole thing and you know play right. video games or skee ball or whatever all afternoon just for getting good grades it was fantastic. Yeah, right. And, see, and the pizza sucked. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah I mean I, that I that I kind of knew, and also I had never, um, it, um, 
I, you know, that also speaks to I wasn't really particularly good at video games. I have a hand-eye coordination stuff, so I found myself challenged at those things, and people, my friends would be better at them, so I didn't really have that, and then also that, they're, fuck, they're not a real band. The replacements for a real band. Like, I just had that one, <laughs> just this one singular fucking set of guys. It's like, this is it, and there's nothing else. Uh, and I, and my favorite thing, one of my favorite things in the whole world, and, uh, 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 and this is something I wanted to tell you as well, uh, I love being wrong. I love somebody. I had a buddy. I said, you know, I don't think I love Guardians 2. I'm very excited about the Infinity War. I love this stuff. I did grow up. I've had, I mean, I don't have them anymore, but I had Silver Surfer 1. I had Black Panther 1. You know, I just, I remember when the Black Panther came around, I lived in the Bay Area, and people used to say Black Panther all the time because they were from over in Oakland. Yeah. And I always thought they were cool. I, thought, I, mean, I mean, I didn't understand. I just thought they were cool. Um, uh, I didn't understand the political aspect of it at all because I was very young. But, um, but I like that comic book, and he was the and and I always liked the Marvel stuff because it was arch and also sad and a little bit more human than the DC stuff. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, my friend said you got to watch this. There's a this girl. Her name is Lindsay Ellis, and she does a half hour sort of really deep dive on Guardians too, um, and why it's such a good film. And it, she breaks down the issues. Um, uh, of the Guardians as a family. And I'm telling you, okay. it's, it's like I think how you feel about listening to our podcast. To just hear other people talk about relationship stuff you understand. And, I mean, when she talks about Peter Quill's relationship and how, how in both Guardians he does not end up with the girl and he shouldn't because of his behavior, there were things that she was saying, I go, oh my God, that's my fucking marriage. What am I doing? Like, Whoa. it's so great to like, it just is, I mean, it's really well thought out behavior stuff that's in this these there's movies where you're like i don't think i i don't think i you know on second viewing now i can't unsee it i yeah. can't now um and, and i'll send you a link to it but i think we we like to know that other people understand us that's the beauty of podcasts and mira and i don't know anything other than we're explaining <laughs> our experiences and we've been doing it for a while and it and trust me there are days where that podcast gives me no comfort you can hear it in the room I used to, <laughs> i've called it i've called that thing into the awkward where like you know where, where something will end and it'll be like well that's unresolved and then we'll both wait to figure out how we're going to go to another topic uh i was wondering about that yeah uh-huh yeah. Uh -huh. yeah 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 we usually drive separately um <laughs> But in fact, kind of like when I went to uh, uh, therapy with my ex-wife. Yes. Yeah. We but didn't go together. <laughs> in fact, over time, it has saved our marriage, and also it has our life. It, I mean, truly, is better. It is, I mean, it, it sounds odd on the podcast, and some of them are a little bit out of order because we banked a bunch of them at the beginning to see if we were going to even be able to get through it, and mm -hmm. um, and it has made a difference. And while we're still, we still have bridges to cross, and we try to be honest and not paint something. Um, um, different. If, if for not, if not for that podcast, I, we might be divorced. Yeah, we might have just not been able to hear each other. I mean, truly. If, if I don't, should I even ask this? If you yeah. had, if just for argument's sake, yeah. you got divorced, yeah, would that ruin your not image, but your product? Have you ever, uh, has that uh, ever crossed your mind? Oh, I think. I mean, uh, a long time ago. A thought like that would have crossed my mind. Now it wouldn't because yeah. I'm just a person. Yeah. And um, um, I mean, yes, I guess some people would would say, well, then I guess this stuff doesn't work. Yeah. And, but I think if you investigate the stuff, you would go, you guys should get divorced because what you're saying, you would, you're not taking your own advice now. Mm -hmm. You're actually not listening to yourself. Yeah. And that's a, a human thing that people do. Right. You've set a premise in the first book. Yeah. I will not accept a life less than the one I deserve. Right, wrong, or indifferent. If it doesn't feel right to me, I have to move, remove myself from it because I think I deserve something different, and I'll find out. Yeah. But I need to be able to hear myself and not be beholden to the wishes of others. Then I need to speak my truth. Uh, um, but I also have to sometimes wait for when that question is asked because you can speak your truth all day to somebody who is, isn't listening, and it doesn't make a difference. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would say about that, and I would be able to figure that out, you know. Or, or, or move on to something else <laughs> do uh let's see where's the time oh yeah let's i got uh a band everyone likes but you don't do you have an example oh yeah um well hmm, let me think uh, um I mean, this can be let me let me help you out with an answer it could be something current or something from like the 60s the 70s the 80s whatever wherever you want to go it's funny cuz i've turned around on a lot of stuff but i mean like i would have said um, I mean, I'm, look, this is what I do all the time. 
Yeah, it would have been oh, Arcade Fire. Well, I got into Arcade Fire seven years later. Okay. Um, um, I'm trying to think of something that I just cannot digest. I mean, you just can't sell a Steely Dan to me in any way. Um, in any way, you just can't. I've on the way to your show like, last yeah, night, Greg, a uh, Steely Dan song came on the radio. <laughs> oh my God! This ties into so many things. A Steely Dan song came on the radio, and uh, my wife looked at me and she just goes, "Nope." <laughs> <laughs> we changed the station. We had actually just we were uh, we we just pulled up to a uh, to a meter here. We we're like outside Acme. Yeah, around the corner here. Yeah, we pull up. The song's on. She goes, "Nope." I changed the station uh, in this, and we had it up turned uh, not real loud, but pretty loud. Her window was down. Yeah. And it goes to the nine. I have the satellite radio. It went to yeah. the '90s pop station. <gasps> Baby got back. This guy and this woman were walking by. Woman weighed like 350 pounds. Oh, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hit, the, hit the volume. <laughs> oh, my God. This could have just turned into the worst. Oh, my God. You have like a sentient car. You have like a sentient radio. Oh, my God. Like a, like a sassy teen radio. And what's so funny is we, I immediately, like as quick as possible, reached out to turn the volume down. And both of us knew, what, you know. It's so there were, no one said anything about it, that. Like, oh, her. We just like, no, no, no. Isn't that so funny? That's so interesting. That, because my wife does the same thing too, where she'll go, nope. And I'll be like, why, why is that a universal nope? I don't know that we, I, why did I not get a vote in that? Because I'm not sure. And she's like, no, that makes my ass bleed. And then I'll be like, okay. Which she just says a lot. My wife is a foul mouth. Um, uh, no, I can tell you the one. Yes, I can tell you exactly what it is. I, I, and, and because um, I don't think about it because I don't have hatred. I cannot. I cannot make Springsteen work for me at all, okay. ever. Yep. I, the person, absolutely. I think I think he's great. I I understand on a like uh, it's like trying to understand a rocket. Yes, I understand how that rocket works and I support it, but I don't want to get in it and I don't want to go where that rocket's going yeah. at all. So Springsteen, and I've had guys sit down with me and play songs and go, "Yep, still don't like it." And even you're talking about it, nope, it doesn't. It won't go into my heart space. It just there isn't anything about it. Isn't what if someone enough. broke it down like they did with uh, Guardians too? It pointed out, no, Greg, this is why you're, you're not catching it. You're not catching all the Maybe, subtleties. But I haven't met that person yet. No. And I've had a lot of people try, including it's not Tom, me. Uh, even Tom Morello from Raging Against the Machine tried to get me to him. And we were old friends. And I was just like, but dude, I love you, but we got to part ways here. And you wouldn't respect me if I just caved to everything you liked. Yeah. I don't care for it. Uh, but Fair I'm trying point. to get you to put Link Ray in the, in the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and you're not having it. So <laughs> we have that problem. Uh, one more. Band you like that deserves more attention. Well, okay, so those, so obviously the replacements, but the replacements, you know, don't have them, but they, but they do. They're notorious for not having it. Like they're famous for not being famous. Yeah, they're famously famous for not being famous and <laughs> beloved. Um, uh, and uh, and maybe up to the point where they, at that point, it is up to them. Yeah. Um, Link Ray was the was the first and only person to have an instrumental song banned from the radio it's a song called rumble it you you know it from the tarantino movies yeah um he is um uh my favorite guitar player uh he wrote he started uh, 1958 was when that song came out um he lived a whole long time he made a lot of instrumental songs many of them are awful in a way that's so good um he is uh he was jack white but he was trying and he didn't want it to be bad uh or or Gronky or weird or atonal or whatever, but he was um, a really interesting guitar player. So that's one of my things where I start talking and people start to go to sleep. <laughs> if I bring up any surf band, so I tell people because I'm in, I was in a surf band. Right, right. Uh, yeah, that, that is the uh, uh, witness protection program of music. You start talking about that and you disappear. <laughs> that's it. You don't need to go to a safe house. Just join a surf band. <laughs> They're trying to think. Do they have, you know, satellite radio has a there's a station for everything. Is there a, is there a surf? Uh, there, um, no, there isn't one. I think because uh, nobody would work there because uh, they'd have to change the tape every once in a while. I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 no. I get it. Like even surf bands quit during the middle of the thing. It's such interesting, cool music, and you want to be able to do an album of it. But I've never gone back and listened to all. Like I love our music, and it's very for surf music. It's very varied, and we keep making music because it's fun to do. Yeah. But I can see why. I. You wouldn't listen to all of it all the time ever. So, you know, um, uh, people love a lyric. Yeah. They really, mm -hmm. they really do. I sang an Edwin Collins song the other night at this, um, uh, I, w I performed at a, 
Rex Manning Day, which is uh, Rex Manning Day is from, from Empire movie. Records. Yeah. Yes, that is also a thing that people have suddenly embraced. This thing sold out two weeks in advance. There were people there at five o'clock in the afternoon, didn't start till seven, dressed as in costume from the movie. There were girls in panties with just an apron on as Renee Zellweger. Wow. And I, they said, do you want to come and sing the Edwin Collins song? Well, I've never, I don't sing. It's not what I do. But my friend Mike, who's I'm in the band with, said, I think you can sing this one. And it seems like it would be in your voice. Um, and I did sing it. It was fucking fantastic. And now I understand why people don't want to listen to surf music. But uh, I auditioned for that movie years ago. And, um, uh, and, it, and I told this story there. Well, I'll, I'll leave it with this. Um, I auditioned for it. Um, to play the Anthony LaPaglia part and I auditioned badly and then on my way out I walked into the wall I, like the, I, the, I hit half the doorway with my face and I knocked videotapes like 30 of them just fucking fell slowly off of this wall right at this casting director's place it just was and they kept like they're still falling they were falling clunk 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 and, they, and I started oh, fuck, I'm so sorry and, and and the woman laughed so hard and um um and she brought me back for Jerry Maguire, which I got cast in, um, and then was cut out. And uh, I never understood why I was cut out until I told this story the other night. I said, you know what's so weird is I, I, uh, I got to, the whole reason uh, that it's so interesting is that I auditioned for that movie, and then I got to hear a sort of not great story about Glenn Fry from Cameron Crowe. And the story goes like this. Cameron Crowe came to me during a break and shooting. I shot all night. I was in a scene that um, uh, Tom Cruise and uh, Cuba Gooding are walking out of this thing, out of the... Um, out of the game and uh, I come up and I'm a Tidwell fan the Cuba Gooding Jr. character yeah. and I assault him and then I see somebody more famous and I run off um, but, um, and uh, so it was fun and we shot all night long and both those guys were nice to me it was like winning a contest I was having the best time and uh, really having a lot of fun with it and um, Cameron Crowe took me to the side and he said uh, he said man yesterday we were shooting with Glenn Fry and um but he was supposed to do a thing where he was just supposed to make the phone sign with his hand. It's at the end of the movie where uh, Tom Cruise and Cuba are having this moment together. And he just walks by in the background and goes, call me. We'll, you know, we're going to give him the contract he wants. That's the whole point of the movie is that Tidwell wants the money. He's going to get the money. Right. All he has to do is put his hand up to it. He's got many scenes where he talks, but not in this one. He's just fucking like that. And he goes, he would not fucking every time. Give me a call. Cut. Just blend. Nothing. Just the hands, please. What? <laughs> just, it, we just have you do what I asked. It's, just, it's real quick like that. So. I'm telling this story, and I was like, "I go," and it occurs to me now that what the reason he was telling me that story is that he was intimating to me that perhaps he would like me to not be improvising the scene so much uh, because it did not end up in the movie. <laughs> However, I just thought it was an anecdote about a guy who was an idiot, <laughs> and I'm not an idiot. <laughs> and how many how many years later you figured it out? <laughs> uh, well, uh, let's see. That came out, I think, in yeah, a lot of like. Many. Uh, when did Jeremy Maguire must have come out in like ninety three, four, five? Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably. I think that's right. Uh -huh. That's right. And it was, um, um, yes. And so I'm now just getting the point of I, I quit acting uh, before that, but um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just figured that out. I'm in the deleted scenes of the 10th anniversary DVD, if that's a thing anybody has or cares oh, about. But really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The beauty of it is it paid for my, like, I, I that was in the old days where uh, everything was being invented. So every time they would move something to a new format, like it was VHS and then the Blu-ray and then the the DVDs and then the double DVD packs and then stuff. Every time I would do that, Jerry Maguire was one of the, it had become an instant classic. So it was always a movie that went and then sold overseas and blah, blah, blah. So I would always get, it just kept me in the union year oh, after nice. year. So when I had my baby, I had insurance. Yeah. But I've since made sure to get rid of that and not have any insurance because we would love to do like to fly that way. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm fucking, I'm one of the replacements, man. Fuck you, insurance and jobs and trying and <laughs> working hard and taking your fucking hits. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, this has been great. Thank you uh, so yeah, much, man. Yeah, uh, people uh, need to follow you on social media, get the dates to see where you're going to be. And since we're here in Minneapolis, and this is Acme's podcast, come here and see a show. Yeah, it's yeah, a great yeah. show. Uh, Ali Sultan is working with you, along yeah, with Steve good. Gillespie. Both very funny stuff. Yeah, yeah, both great guys. I'm sure there'll be some droppings on Saturday night. I'm going to record. I'm making a record. Oh, oh gonna, I didn't know yeah, this. Yeah, I'm putting out. I'm doing a record with Rooftop, and I um and I wanted to record it here. It was one of those. Uh, hey, let's just do it there. Let's just do it there Saturday night. So um. Oh, uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't panic when you come out. I'm not going to be superstitious about it. Uh, I'm going to lay here on the stage until that time. Uh, <laughs> but uh, just to get it warm. But um. 
um, right. uh, uh, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, man. I'm Gregory Barron on uh, uh, Twitter and uh, Greg A. Style on Instagram. And those are really the important ones. If you're over on Facebook, get off. <laughs> Wait, wait, one more, one more. What, what did you, uh, what are you calling yourself on Twitter right now? Uh, Cardi G? Cardi G. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's because I love a cardigan sweater. Oh, Gregor's loves a cardigan sweater. Oh, Cardi G. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. You got it. <laughs>